Well, welcome everyone to day one of our third annual 1619 Education Conference. Thank you for making um, time to be here. I'm Donnelly Domna. I'm one of the senior program managers um, on the Pulitzer Center K-12 education team, and I'm the manager of our 1619 education programs. Um, for those who don't know, the Pulitzer Center champions the power of stories to make complex issues relevant and inspire action. We believe that journalism can be a key element for mobilizing society and that the people and communities who actively engage with systemic challenges will find solutions together. We're very proud to be an education partner for the 1619 Project, and our 1619 Education Network consists of teams of educators from across the country who are collaborating together to better understand and better teach the history and legacies of slavery in the United States. This conference is a culminating celebration of their work and effort throughout the school year. I'm extremely honored that we have the opportunity to open our programming with some words from the Pulitzer Prize winning creator of the 1619 Project, Nicole Hannah-Jones. Um, the book version of the 1619 Project, as well as the 1619 Project children's book, Born on the Water, were instant number one New York Times bestsellers. The 1619 Project is now a six part docuseries on Hulu and won an Emmy for outstanding documentary or nonfiction series. Nicole is a staff writer at the New York Times Magazine, and her career investigating racial inequality and injustice has earned her the MacArthur Fellowship, known as the Genius Grant, a Peabody Award, two George Polk Awards, and the National Magazine Award three times. She also serves as the Knight Chair of Race and Journalism at Howard University, where she founded the Center for Journalism and Democracy. Nicole is the co-founder of the Ida B. Wells Society for Investigative Reporting, which seeks to increase the number of investigative reporters and editors of color. And in 2022, she opened the 1619 Freedom School, a free after-school literacy program in her hometown of Waterloo, Iowa. The 1619 Freedom School program has just opened applications for educators to pilot their liberation through literacy curriculum, which you can learn more about at 1619freedomschool.org. Nicole, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Donnelly. Um, and thank you for the introduction and thank you for all the work that you've been doing with educators, um, particularly on the 1619 Project. And welcome to uh, all of the educators who have joined the Zoom today. I see about 245 of you and it's really exciting to be in the third year of the 1619 uh, education cohort groups. So I'm just going to um, kind of set the the table, I guess, so to speak, for uh, the work that you all are, are doing. Um, the 1619 Project has really been um, the most important work of my life, and it's such an honor uh, to be able to be in conversation with educators all across the country. This is actually the the summer will be the fifth anniversary of the publication of the original 1619 Project, and it's kind of um, hard to believe that since the project published, I've been working on nothing but 1619 uh, since. And the Pulitzer Center, of course, has been a partner with us at the New York Times from the beginning uh, when we first published the project and really has developed this uh, teacher cohort program into an astoundingly um, uh, fascinating and I think liberating and really um, a companion to uh, both the 1619 Project and the work that so many of you are doing. I think as we as we gather here today, um, it's very clear how critical it is that educators are trying to teach our children the truth. We know that truth is under attack. We know that the 1619 Project is under attack. We know that uh, books that are trying to teach around the history of racism and racial injustice um, are being banned and taken out of the classroom. So I want to really uh, commend all of you educators for the tremendous amount of courage that it takes to even try to teach the truth and uh, to collaborate in this way, even as you know, uh, that this type of work is under attack. But what I don't have to tell you is that our students benefit so much from the way that you all have taken this project and turned it into curriculum and uh, across fields, you know, mathematics, uh, social studies, science, I've seen a nutrition curricula created from this and that it really makes um, 
this history, this legacy of slavery that is shaping the lives of our students and our children every day, um, it makes it clear to them. It makes a world make sense to them. And I hope that for all of you educators, um, that you're also learning a lot and that you are um, able to use your creativity in making uh, this curriculum a part of what you teach our students every day. Um, so I want to briefly um, talk about the pilot curriculum that we're creating through the 1619 Freedom School. So the 1619 Freedom School, um, I founded in 2022. It's a free after-school literacy program uh, that serves the students most behind in reading in my hometown. It's a fourth and fifth grade curriculum. And then we're going to continue uh, to move up into middle school. And this is a curriculum that teaches really literacy through black history. And it is um, created by a, a master educator and professor at Georgetown named uh, Sabrina Wesley Nero. And so we've been using this curriculum in the Freedom School for two years. And it was always my plan to make this open source for any educator who might want to use these techniques and use these histories and the text in their own classrooms. So we are now I'm excited to say piloting um, the first cohort who will kind of test out the curriculum um, and allow us to uh, release this eventually as an open source curriculum. So if any of you are interested, um, it aligns, we, we've been working with the Pulitzer Center, uh, consulting with the Pulitzer Center and it aligns uh, very easily with the work that you're trying to do uh, through the 1619 Education Network. Um, I think that what's most important in these times is that all of our students, no matter their race, are getting an education that allows them to question, to be skeptical of narrative, um, that is not afraid of discomfort in the classroom. Because frankly, that's how we teach our students empathy. That's how we teach our students that uh, we can make different decisions than the decisions that have been made before them. And also it reflects back to them the reality of a world that they see every day, but that the mythological histories we've all been taught don't reflect on very well. Uh, my own daughter's school, so I'm of course a public school parent in Brooklyn, and my own daughter's school, uh, uh, Urban Assembly, which is uh, Unison Urban Assembly, they actually were part of the 1619 education cohort. And it was an amazing experience for that school, um, an amazing experience for the students. So the work that you do matters. Um, it matters, it has always mattered, but it's even more critical today. Again, I would just like to thank you all for choosing uh, this worthy profession. I would like to thank you all for the courage to continue to teach the truth um, and to continue to get the education that you need so that you can better educate our children. So um, I wish you all the best and I'm looking forward to um, everything else that you're going to create and hopefully we'll continue uh, to share with each other and to build and grow for a better future for all of our kids. Thank you so much, Nicole. Um, for both the reflection and the sharing about the Freedom School opportunity, which I really do think will be um, just a, a beautiful thing to see how it unfolds um, and a great framing for our day today as we talk through a community practice, doing this work in community um, and connecting this historical content to our local histories everywhere to general um, anti-racist education practice. Um, so uh, to kick things off, I want every, I would love to take this time to just thank Nicole. We can thank her in a chat um, for being here and then invite our, our first panelist on, um, on camera to the screen so that we can discuss their brilliant contributions to the 1619 Project. Um, and so Dr. Joshua Bennett, um, Cornelius Ely, and Robert Jones Jr. are here with us today. Um, Yes, thank you for these um, comments coming in that we can all see. 